Hello friends, my name is Ngum. Welcome to Ngum's Garden Possibilities. I'm in my backyard garden today and I would like to give you a fall tour of the garden. So join me. These two beds, I have garden huckleberry in them, also known as jamanjama. This is the big leaf bafusam type of jamanjama, which is growing here. We're nearing the end of the planting season. This is fall, so we still have maybe just one harvest to go. But we'll zoom in closer so you can see what it looks like. We have been harvesting throughout the summer, and the idea behind harvesting frequently is so that you can get more growth. So pretty much you pick the tender leaves and the stems. You pick the tender leaves and the stems just like so. And it would grow new side shoots above the node where you just harvest. We have harvested the garden huckleberry several times throughout the summer. And after a number of harvests, I think probably four or five times, this is what the fall uh, garden looks like in terms of the njamanjama. And we still have one harvest before the frost comes. So I am grateful for that. I also have this taro plant here. And the intention was that it would provide some shade for the garden huckleberry. It is still doing well. I use the leaves to cook different traditional dishes in my house. I just love it. I also have flowers interspersed in the beds in the garden and like I've said in my previous videos they are there for beauty and to attract pollinators but it also helped a lot with in terms of companion planting the Japanese beetles and other insects are thriving on the flowers and leaving my vegetables alone so one way to deal with pests in your garden I also have some basil in the pots here Basil does really well in the heat, so it's starting to shrivel up. This is still doing well, but you can see the leaves are starting to shrivel up and get darker, and that's because it's getting cold. I'm going to harvest and preserve this to use during the winter time. This is my other bed of jamanjama. Again, I have a lot of flowers here. I have this huge plant here and it is a gooseberry plant it's a gooseberry plant and it's just starting to form flowers here i am not sure if i'll be able to harvest from this but we will wait and see i have a solitary butternut squash plant here the interesting thing about this plant is that it grew from my compost so I just put a cage around it to grow and it's good to harvest. The way you know that your squash plants are ready for harvest, squash, pumpkins, is that the stem dries up and as you can see, it's dry all the way up. So it's ready for harvest and storage. In this planter, I have what you call Malaba spinach. It's a climbing plant, as you can see. And the leaves are similar to spinach, very thick leaves, very watery. You can eat it in your salad. Back home, we used to use it to um, in okra soup. You cook it, you cook your okra soup and you add this as a leaf-free vegetable in there. These little dots that you see here are the seeds and they are mature when they get dark like this one. So I'm hoping before the frost comes, then I'll have a lot of dark seeds that I can harvest and save for next year. I also have some anchia plants interspersed in here. For some reason, anchia does really well during the cooler times of the year, like in the fall, late summer. Anchia is in the same family as a African garden egg. However, you don't eat the fruits, you eat the leaves. Okay. 
These two beds are where I have my bitter leaf plants, right here and here. And I have a row of the bitter bitter leaf right here. And the rest of it is the sweet bitter leaf. I have another video that talks about the differences between the sweet and the bitter bitter leaf harvesting and processing. So check that out on my channel. Bitter leaf does really well in the heat and it has been thriving really well with the few times of rain that we've had here. I think this is the last flush of bitter leaf that we'll have before the snow comes. I also have taro leaves interspersed in here. These are the bitter bitter leaf plants and the fastest way to propagate them is to plant them from the stem. I have two videos on my channel that explain in detail how that is done. But I wanted to bring that up because with the fall and the winter coming, bitter leaf dies in our zone here in Minnesota. In the warmer zones, your bitter leaf would probably do well if you mulch it. Uh, what I'm going to do is trim off some of the stems and keep them in warm water, in water in a jar. And I'll change that every week. I'll show you an example of a bitter leaf stem that was propagated this summer and it's ready for harvest. So these are some of the bitter bitter leaf stems that I planted this summer after the first harvest. You can see that it's starting to form new side shoots and it's just a faster way to grow the bitter bitter leaf. These are the side shoots that grew from the old stem that was harvested from another plant. I have a few of them tucked in this bed here. On this bed, I have some crops that are doing really well in the fall and one of them is Swiss chard. I have the rainbow chard variety because it has different colors. You have the pink, the yellow. I think this is a burgundy kind. This does really well in the fall. So if you're hoping to plant a fall garden, this would be a good crop to plant. One advantage about planting in the fall is that you have low pest pressure. So you're dealing with fewer pests as opposed to in the heat of the summer. I have some leeks in this bed. Leeks are a good fall crop to grow. They are in the onion family. I planted this earlier in the summer and it is just picking up really well now that the weather is cooler. You can plant Swiss chard or your leeks if you don't have a space like I do. You can plant them in containers as well. Another crop that I planted and that would do really well in the fall is celery. My sister had some extra celery plants in pots around her house. So I took the extra seedlings and I planted them in here and they are doing really well in the fall. This is a good fall crop to grow. And the more you harvest it, the more it's going to pr produce side shoots. Again, low pest pressure in the fall. All of this is celery. So transitioning from this bed, this is the bed that I call my herb bed. 99% of the things in this bed are herbs. Over here are basil. Basil does not do really well in the cooler time of the year. The summer time is when it thrives really well. So we're pretty much harvesting the last few healthy leaves of the basil here. Here I have what you call a holy basil. In Cameroon, it's called masepo. It's used to cook a lot of traditional dishes back home. I am going to dig up the plant with the roots and bring it indoors so it can survive the winter. One thing I want to point out is it produces seeds. These little pods here are the seeds. And you know when it's ready to harvest, the seeds are mature when they dry up like this. So I'm going to cut this off and keep it in a cool, dry place so I have seeds for next year. I had different kinds of basil here, um, cinnamon basil, lemon basil, but they've reached the end of their season. Down this way we have green onions. These are green onions, spring onions. And then I have some tarragon here. It's good to season chicken and fish. 
this is cinnamon basil i use it for tea it's starting to form flowers i'll just let this continue forming flowers so i can harvest the seeds i have more leeks here oh and i even still have some onions some red onions that i planted from seed and then over here i have some carrots parsnips those are good fall crops to grow let me try one and see if it's ready Oops. parsnip that's the first time growing it i think you eat it just like you would a carrot i have flat leaf parsley here some more celery plants and also some curled leaf parsley. I've been enjoying that throughout the summer. Some chives. These are perennial. They'll come back year after year. An easy herb to grow. And then here is uh, pineapple sage. And regular sage. I also have some thyme here. And then this is celery root. This is the first time I'm growing it. You eat the tops, the green tops. But then you also eat the bottom. I hear it tastes like a potato. That bottom that is in the soil. More basil, rosemary over here. Oregano. I have oregano in this pot. This is a perennial and easy herb to grow. It will come back year after year. This is an oriental species of oregano that I planted. I just love the way it looks. It almost looks like a succulent. And then I have different herbs in pots as well. More basil, more thyme, basil. And then lastly, I have lemon balm, which I use for tea in the summertime. These are things that I grew in planters. Again, an example of... Um, gardening you can do if you if you have a small space in this bed i have some lettuce that i grew here we've been harvesting that i have some pork choy and different varieties of swiss chard these are great fall plants and as you can see they're doing well in a container so an example of what you can do if you have a small space i also have some pepper plants in containers here here's one I actually have two of them in the container and there's another one more over here here's another one a pepper plant in a container with some ginger too i have a ghost and a habanero pepper plant in here and these are sweet bell peppers two in each container they're doing really well the thing about planting in containers is you have to maintain hydration by watering and nutrients compost or manure because it's in a limited space. I also have some mint in containers. It's just one way to contain the mint. Mint will grow wild if you let it grow in your garden. So I have it in containers. It will come back year after year. More fall crops you can grow. Celery, as we've talked about before. Cabbage. You can see the leaves have very few holes. Low pest pressure. One thing that enjoys the brassicas like kale, cabbage, cauliflower, are um, moth butterflies. So I have very few of them at this time of the year. And here's my kale. I've been harvesting that throughout the year. Again, you can plant these in containers if you don't have a lot of space. More peppers, as I've talked about before, in containers. Mint, I have different kinds of mint. This is an orange mint. I have regular mint, peppermint, different flavors for tea. Over here, I have beetroot. This is a good fall crop to grow. You can eat the beetroot itself, but you can also eat the tender leaves in your salad or in your smoothie. And it's doing really well in a container. An idea for gardeners that are dealing with a small space. Over on this side of the house, we have quite a few things. I love my zinnias. I have a lot of them here. They help with pollination and with pest pressure. They're 
a lot of beauty in the garden too. I also have some turmeric that I started from root. These are the turmeric plants. There are a few of them in there. They love heat. And then ginger as well. Ginger needs at least six to nine months to mature. So we'll be harvesting this last before the frost comes. Over here we have water leaf. This is a kind of spinach that's used for cooking a lot of vegetable soups in Cameroon and a number of countries in West Africa. It's forming flowers and these tiny pots at the top of the plant are where the seeds are. If you break open the seeds, these are still white, so they are not mature. When they turn black, that's a sign that they are mature and they break open and self-seed themselves. If you're in a zone that's warm down south, you don't have to plant water leaf every year. In Minnesota, our water leaf dies out, so we have to plant it every year. I have different species of hot and sweet peppers here. This is Trinidad scorpion pepper. This is a banana pepper. This is a Hungarian paprika. This one. More hot peppers. And garden egg, our African garden egg. Caribbean red hot peppers. I have different varieties of sweet peppers over here that we've enjoyed and harvested throughout the summer. And I needed to stick them because they get really big and can be pushed down by the wind. We still have a few more to harvest. Over on this side, I have tomatoes. We had cherry tomatoes here that we're able to trellis up this trellis here. I also have mushroom basket tomato. And the Roma tomatoes are done with at this time. And this trellis has been really helpful. We have a lot of cucumbers here. And they've been climbing up on this trellis and still producing, even though it's getting a little bit colder now. Here are our cucumbers. They're doing really well. All right. So there you have it, friends. That's my fall backyard garden tour with examples of things you can plant in the fall, things you can plant in containers, and things you can plant in the ground. I hope this video was beneficial to you, whether you have a small space to garden with or a huge garden lot like I do. Please share and subscribe so you'll be notified every time we upload a video. Thank you for being here. Bye, friends.